I am so excited to not only share with you some wonderful $3 dinner ideas, but also stay tuned till the end of the video because I'm going to share with you some awesome money-saving tips when it comes to buying groceries. Hopefully some of these ideas will be new to you. They're all things that I've utilized over the past year by becoming very strict with my grocery budget. Of course, we can't control the rising prices of things around us. Inflation is a part of life, but hopefully you can utilize some of my tips and tricks on your next grocery haul to help save yourself a little bit of money. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to share with you some $3 dinner ideas plus some of my helpful tips that I think you'll really enjoy to save money on your grocery budget. Of course we have to start out with my little grocery haul. I got this red lentil gluten-free pasta for $2.48. The green chilies were 76 cents. If you can't tell, I did go to Walmart for this haul, by the way. These cannellita beans, I got them two packages, 72 cents each. You can use any white bean that you'd like. Crushed red tomatoes, this 32 ounce can was 92 cents. This little tiny onion was 28 cents. This one pound bag of carrots was 98 cents. This single zucchini was 71 cents. My pack of celery was $1.48. And that brings my grocery total to $9.05. One of the tips that I'll share with you later today is that when you are willing to go the extra mile and do a couple of things handmade and prep your food, you know, sometimes cutting and chopping saves you a lot of money. But I made homemade veggie broth. I've been doing this for over a year. We really, really love it. It has so much flavor. So that is one of the things I actually did the day before I made these recipes. I cut and chopped my veggies and then I saved the scraps. I popped them in my pressure cooker with a bunch of water just to cover it. You can add seasonings if you want. I typically don't because I like to season my food as I am making it. Put it in my pressure cooker for an hour and we're good to go. Let me know in a comment down below if you are a soup person. I'm a huge soup person. It can be blazing hot in the summer and I want soup. I don't know, it's just a huge comfort food for me. In a high speed blender or a food processor, you're gonna take your beans and about half of your veggie broth. Now, I split my veggie broth into two large servings, so I guess it would be technically a quarter of it, and you're gonna whip that up. I did not drain or rinse my beans. You can if you would like, but I like them for this purpose, not drained or rinsed because I feel like it gives so much more richness and creaminess, but it's kind of controversial whether or not you should rinse your canned beans or not. It really just depends on the recipe for me. If I'm recooking them into a soup and they are smoothed out, usually I don't drain and rinse, but then you'll see here in a little bit that I do drain and rinse again <laughs> for another recipe. So it's totally up to you on what you're doing. But I did go ahead and add the onions and celery to a pot with some seasonings. You can add any seasonings that you'd like. It doesn't matter. And then some of the green chilies. What I did for this $3 dinners is I spent $9.05 and I utilized this to make three meals. And I'm going to actually share with you here in a little bit how many servings and the actual cost of each serving to kind of just break it down for you to hopefully be a little bit helpful. Now with this soup, if you do want it to be a little bit thicker, you could add some potatoes and make room for that in your budget, or you could just add a little cornstarch slurry and that will definitely thicken it up. This would be so, so, so good with some homemade bread. I'll leave a recipe down in the description box below for that so you can utilize the homemade bread with this soup recipe. The next 
next recipe is a delicious pasta salad. I decided to take half of my gluten-free pasta, about two cups of carrots, half a can of beans, some green chilies, and of course some celery, and throw that together to make a cold pasta salad. Now cold pasta salad might not sound good where you are. You could definitely eat this hot if you want to. It's still around 80 degrees per day here where I am in the great desert of Las Vegas, and I am obsessed with cold pasta salad. It's a great take and go lunch, and that's what this was for me this week, but this is also a really easy thing that you can throw together with leftovers or odds and ends in your pantry, fridge, and freezer to save you some money. That's another tip I'm gonna give you later in the video, so make sure you stay tuned till the end. And of course, I feel like we always have odd condiments on hand. So for this dressing, I used a little bit of the veggie broth and a little bit of spicy mustard, mixed that together and it was perfect. So flavorful with a little bit of garlic and onion and salt, and of course those green chilies. It was so good for lunch this week. pre-prepped my carrots and my celery. I did that yesterday when I was making my veggie broth, so those are ready to go. I also skinned my onion, but I didn't chop it, so we're gonna do that really quickly, and then also chop my zucchini. I wanted to add another quick tip in here that most of you probably already know, but you'd be surprised at how many people just don't know. If you buy your fruits and veggies seasonally, you can save so much money. Now this does mean that sometimes these veggies and fruits do get a little old after a while because when you're buying things seasonally, like peppers and zucchini in the summer, um, certain fruits and berries, you kind of get tired of them and you want something different. But if you can really stick to buying seasonal fruits and veggies, it can really be helpful. Now I know some people have allergies. I did have a lot of comments over the summer of people saying they were tired of me making lunch ideas, dinner ideas with peppers, but peppers are so inexpensive over the summertime. They're actually one of my favorite veggies in the entire world next to tomatoes. But in the winter, this prices skyrocket for us here. They're sometimes four and five times more expensive than they are in the summer months. So if you can learn to like seasonal veggies, then you will save yourself so much money. Shout out to my friend Robin who got me this spoon. It is my favorite cooking utensil in the entire world. And let me tell you, I think every house should have one. If you're looking for a great Christmas gift, grab one on Amazon. They're always linked down in the description box below. Trust me, everyone in your family needs one of these spoons. share with you really quickly the servings that I made with each dish to give you kind of an idea of what I split the servings into. Now, mind you, everyone's caloric needs are different throughout the day, 
and you need to eat enough for your body. So if this is one meal for you, one giant serving, that's great. If you can split this into more, that's great. This is just for ideas, just for some inspiration to give you guys if you are looking for some budget friendly meals. So the first recipe, the minestrone soup, I served into five servings. This is definitely the most hearty recipe of the three. I feel like it has the most veggies, a good amount of starch, and it holds up really well on its own. is the pasta salad which I would eat cold and it is so delicious all you need is a little bit of mustard to add to this and I made this into ser three servings to make it a little bit more hearty and like I said it's delicious and if you have regular pasta and not gluten-free you can actually make the serving sizes bigger or make more portions I only had an eight ounce box and your pasta would be probably about a third of the price of mine if you're just using regular pasta so this one like I said is split into three servings and it costs about a dollar per serving the white bean chili and this is the lightest recipe of the three you could definitely add some potatoes to this which would be really really delicious and also inexpensive or some really nice crusty bread I will leave my crusty bread recipe down in the description box below along with an Irish soda bread that's actually gluten-free both of them are super cost friendly and delicious so no matter if you're gluten-free or just regular you can enjoy either of these breads but I split this up into three servings so just one dollar per serving Money. As you know, my husband and I over the past year have been on a journey. We took six months of the last year to become debt free and the next six months to save as much as we can and now we are in a new build process. So I feel like the tips that I'm about to give you are fresh, they're new, plus they're things that I have utilized in my own life so I feel like they can be very helpful. Of course, if these are not fresh and new tips to you and things that you already do, just let me know in the comments below if you have something helpful to add on to my tips so anyone that is looking for something helpful can gather as much information as they need. My biggest tip when it comes to saving money on groceries is to meal plan. First, look in your pantry, fridge, and freezer. See what you already have on hand because those items have already been purchased. Of course, a lot of you do keep an emergency stock of food at home. You can leave that set aside, but go through your pantry, fridge, and freezer and find odds and ends that you could possibly use up so you're not wasting food. If you didn't know, about 70% of all produce that is purchased here in the US is actually wasted. So one of the things I find along with meal planning is only to buy enough produce to kind of last me through a few of the first front meals throughout the week because produce does go bad awfully fast, especially if that produce is in season. You never know how long it's been sitting in your grocery, how long it's been sitting on the shelf, how long it was in the truck, etc. Etc. So sometimes when you bring it at home, it can already be about 90% rotten. So what I do when I meal plan is I actually buy a lot of frozen or canned veggies and produce because I find they're a lot more cost effective so I'm not throwing a lot of items away. If I am purchasing fresh produce, which we do every single week, I make sure to use that in the front of my meals the first few days. That way it gets used up and it never goes to waste. Along with meal planning and cooking from the items you already have at home, is to make things homemade. Convenience meals are convenient, but they do cost more. Homemade breads, soups, even broths like I showed you in today's recipe can stretch a lot further. If your family likes pancake, make a homemade pancake bake instead of frozen pancakes or waffles. Yes, it does take a little bit more time, but the nice thing is with a lot of these products, you can make them ahead of time in bulk. Pancakes and waffles can be made on the weekend. You can store them in your freezer for up to six months as long as you mark them on the freezer bag when they were made. And then just like that, you've saved so much money on breakfast items. So yes, convenient foods are something we utilize every single week especially on busy nights but if you're really looking to cut back extremely on your grocery budget or to just tie up some loose ends and create some margin in your budget make sure you're making homemade bread pancakes waffles soups 
pasta, etc., and cutting back as much as you can on convenience food items. This also includes buying beans in bulk and making them either on your stove top or in your pressure cooker instead of canned beans. The same with lentils, pasta sauces, etc. Plus, I'll link a whole bunch of helpful meal ideas down in the description box below, so make sure to check out the playlist that I am adding. If you are not new to my channel, you know running on plants means, hi, I'm 100% plant-based, but maybe you stumbled on this video for $3 dinner ideas, and maybe you are not plant-based. Well, let me tell you, going plant-based or even utilizing a few plant-based meals every single week can save you so much money on your grocery budget. Swapping out animal products for beans or legumes can really be helpful on your pocketbook. Lentils and beans can be great replacements for soups, stews, lasagnas, pasta meats, and even tacos. If you need some meal ideas, of course, check the description box down below. Another idea that I always like to share is to think outside the box. Sometimes you have to create more margin in your life and therefore in your budget. So one of the things I personally like to use is fetch rewards. Now, I personally don't use Ibotta because Ibotta, you have to purchase the item to get money back. And a lot of those items are convenience foods and things we don't use in our personal life. But fetch rewards is very different from that where you can scan every every single receipt, grocery, gas, or even a department store purchase into the app and gain rewards. When you stock up your points, you can then turn those rewards into free gift cards. So like I like to say, you're already purchasing the items, you might as well stock up on points, receive free gift cards, and then in turn, turn that into free groceries. On the Fetch app, you can get Walmart rewards, you can get Target, you can get Visa rewards, gift cards, so that way you are creating margin in your budget by already things that you're currently purchasing. Of course, check the description box down below because if you use my Fetch Rewards referral code, you will get 2,000 instant bonus points just for signing up. And last but not least, utilize inexpensive meal ideas throughout the week. What we like to do is three, four, and five dollar dinners, and that keeps our ingredients very simple. When you're only budgeting for three, four, and five dollar meals, you're not buying an abundance of items or ingredients. This keeps our budget super low, so when we want to splurge a little bit, we've created room in our margin. Typical weeks, we spend about $50 a week in groceries, but there has been some weeks recently where we spent 25 or 30, utilizing the items that we already have on hand, plus incorporating some $3 meal ideas. I hope you found this really helpful. Like I said, if you have an additional tip to add, go ahead and drop it in the comments below. I'm really curious to see what tips you may be adding, but of course, anyone looking for help will love reading your comments down below. And of course, I greatly appreciate you guys chiming in with your helpful tips. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I will see you next Thursday in a jam packed video. There are so many things happening in next Thursday's video. So if you're not subscribed, make sure to do so. And of course, turn on your notifications because you never want to miss a new video by me. With December coming up, I'm probably going to throw a couple extra videos up. So make sure your notifications are on so you don't miss them. Have an awesome day and I'll see you in my next video.